stir their soul in fame and fortune and prosperity. That's true. Hey, 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 hey. Mm -hmm. That's true. Wrong word. No way. But the Bible says the Lord mm -hmm. yeah. restored my soul. Scripture works. Amen. Yeah. And the reason why the Lord restores my soul is because the Lord made my soul. Yes, He did. Oh yeah, He knows. Yes. And the reason why Jesus can walk on the water the way He did. Because he made the walk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. The reason why he, 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 he turned water into wine because the Lord made the wine. Yes, yeah. And the Bible says on one occasion, is there any good thing that come out of man's Nazareth? Mm. Yes. yes. Even though it was a ghetto, mm -hmm. even though it was considered the hood. Yes, sir. Yeah. Even though it was considered a, a, a place where vagabonds lived and, and gangsters. Mm -hmm. That's right. Huh? And murderers lived. Mm -hmm. The Lord saw fit in his great wisdom to bring the Messiah in a place like is anything good? Can anything, anything good come out of it? This is why. My brother and sister, don't get discouraged in your environment. There you go. There you go. There you go. Don't let no one tell you that you can't make it. Mm -hmm. Because of your circumstances. That's right. Because of your education. That's right. Because of your upbringing. Because of God can, can bring Jesus up out of Nazareth. Okay. Yes, Thank you. That's right. And they can do it for him. He can surely do it for you. That's it, Doc. Right, Doc. Amen. He restored my soul. He leaded me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leaded me. If you let God guide you and stop trying to guide yourself, and surrender to him and let him do the leading. He'll take you places where you've never gone before. The Bible says on one occasion, in Psalms 32 and 8, that he said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way in which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. The Lord is my shepherd. And I realized that I am a defenseless, dirty, dumb sheep that's dependent upon him for my very survival. Mm -hmm. And I can rest assured that he's going to take care of me. Yeah, yeah. When the bills piles so high, the Lord says, he's going to take care of me. Amen. Yes, he will. When I lose my job and things look bad, yeah. the Lord says, he's going to take care of me. Mm -hmm. When my family walks out on me and my children are contrary, mm -hmm. the Lord says, he's going to take care of me. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right. And I don't know what you're going through. But there's one thing I do know. If you belong to the Lord, He's going to take care of you. He may not come when you want Him to come. Say that, Doc. But He's always, always, always on time. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge Him. He will direct your path. But you have to wait on it. The key is to wait on it. And a lot of us have messed up our lives because we refuse to wait. We put God on a timetable, and when God doesn't come in that particular time frame, we step ahead of God and we mess up every single time. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. 
wait, I say, on the Lord. Ooh. They that wait upon it shall renew their strength. And come on today, we need our strength renewed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. We need our strength renewed. And we, we renew our strength by waiting on him. We renew our strength by getting into the word. We renew our strength by prayer and supplication. We renew our strength by surrendering our will to his. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. He restores my soul. He leads me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is where it gets difficult. Amen. This is where it, 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 it gets a little dangerous right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. And verse 4, as I get ready to take my seat. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. What do you mean, preacher? Well, that's going to be those times in all of our lives when we're going to have to walk through the valley. Mm -hmm. Don't get quiet on me now. Amen. Amen. Every last one of us here in this church and people watching all around the world, we are going to walk through the valley. Yes. Like it or not, oh, yeah. it is inevitable that we are going to have to walk through the valley. Oh, mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So you may say, well, preacher, how long do I have to walk through the valley? Mm -hmm. Well, I really can't answer that. Yeah. But the fact is that, and that's really not important, how long. Uh, what's important is that when we are going through the valley, that God is with us in the valley. Mm -hmm. Help digging out over there. Help him out. Amen. We need some help, man. Amen. Amen. Give us a fresh chance and walk so. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Some of you today, you may be already in the valley. Teach, Doc, teach. Amen. And I remember, I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say, I remember when I first, when I was conscious of the fact, when I first was in the valley, it scared me to death. Amen. It scared me to death. And the first thing I wanted to do when I got in the valley, I wanted to get out. Amen. I think that's, only, that's probably a natural tendency. When I first knew that I was in the valley, I, I wanted to get out. Amen. 